Hey everyone, how are you doing today? Um, I've had some interest in uh, some of my uh, sleep setups, uh, so I thought I'd, I'd share uh, share those, uh, starting with uh, this one. This is probably the one I use the most. I'd like to call it my favorite, but like most hunting things, uh, sleep setups are kind of situational depending on where you're sleeping. Um, this is a, a good time to go over this one, uh, my hammock setup because last night I was actually sleeping in here and I got to got to listen to a herd come in. Found them this morning about 600 yards down ridge and just had a, a great unsuccessful hunt. Uh, it was fantastic. Spotted the herd at about 600 yards. Was able to close uh, and get the bull to come in to about 100 yards. Uh, he wasn't too vocal or interested in, in coming in and uh, Parallel to cow at about 50 yards for a while, uh, about half hour, 45 minutes. She finally figured out what I what I was, and I wasn't able to to quite get in on on uh, any of them and get a shot. But it was it was quite fantastic. Um, anyhow, this is a setup that a lot of people may have heard about sleeping in a hammock, but a lot of people wave it off saying, oh, I can't sleep in a hammock. Um, it, it hurts my back. And I think one thing that we'll get into and show you on this is that uh, the, the modern hammocks are, are much more comfortable. They do something creating a foot box, which allows you to shift the way that you sit within the hammock and lay pretty much almost flat. I can even curl to my side a little bit if I tuck my legs and sleep on my side. If you happen to be a, a solely a stomach sleeper this may not work for you but normally I'm actually a stomach or a slide sleeper and I actually enjoy sleeping on this in my back it's it's just so comfortable so again we'll get into that in a second but let's kind of uh, look at this from the outside in and just kind of show you uh, what I what I really enjoy about this the first thing I enjoy about the hammock setup is the outside tarp and that's all you can see right now is the tarp that I have set up in inclement weather, hammocks are just a great way to go in the in the high mountains. They get you up off the ground so you're not wet. Uh, I've set up several times in thundering downpour storms and you can get your tarp set up first and then get your wet gear off underneath that tarp and then work to kind of set up the hammock underneath. Once the hammock's set up, then you can bring in your bag and all that kind of stuff in a, in a dry environment versus traditionally in a tent, you're throwing up your tent getting your rain fly on it, getting your wet gear inside the tent uh, where you get all that humidity and moisture. Where this, you've got this dry footprint under your hammock where you can leave all of your wet gear without actually bringing it inside the, the hammock or tent, so to speak, in this case, because the hammock is kind of doubling as, as your tent. So uh, these outside tarps are really nice. Here I have it a little bit elevated because it's a little bit warm so you get airflow coming underneath. In bad weather, you can bring that tarp down to the ground and when you bring it down to the ground, you can create kind of this cocoon for your hammock underneath of it. So next I'm gonna flip to the front of this, this tarp and just kind of show you what that looks like because it has these little wings that come across so you can also close those over. So let's check that out. So here we have the, the front of the tarp and it has these extra little wings that come down uh, to the ground here. You can leave them kind of open in, uh, in good weather. You can even take these and undo it and fold the tarp back all the way to uh, get even more airflow. In bad weather, you can bring these together to really close in the tarp um, and keep out any, any uh, wind and, uh, and inclement weather. So another really nice feature of, of the hammock. So now let's go ahead and we'll open up this tarp. We'll throw all this back and we'll take a look at the hammock itself. So uh, here's the hammock itself uh, underneath that, that tarp. Uh, this model has a bug net, which I, I highly recommend. This is by Warbonnet Outdoors. There's several different styles of, uh, of hammocks that, that you can get. Uh, in a second, the zipper opening is actually on the other side. We'll take a peek at, at that angle too. But I wanted to show you that foot box a little bit, which it's a, it's a little bit confusing. But normally, uh, recreational hammocks and a lot of hammocks, like what my, my dad would sleep in uh, back in the day, you sleep almost like a banana. And that's what a lot of people don't like. You see this, this curve of the hammock, and that forces you to sleep in one position. You're kind of curled up. It's, it's not great on the, the back. But our modern hammocks have what's called a, a foot box on them. And so I'm gonna pull away this bottom quilt. I'll explain this in just a second. But the modern habits have what's called this foot box. It's this big pocket of material. So your feet stick out in that pocket 
and your head out just a little bit the other direction. And so it allows you, instead of sleeping like a banana, you can sleep across the line of the hammock. If you can imagine kind of a, a top-down look, if this were a top-down look at my hammock, instead of sleeping in the hammock like so, you're actually kicking your feet out and sleeping across that line of the hammock so you sleep a lot more comfortably. Uh, there's a lot of videos on setup of these, and I'm not going to get up in, into setup on these videos. The manufacturers have set up videos, but the, the one trick I will tell people is you do have to make sure and get this foot end up higher than you think you would need it. Um, especially with this foot box, which ends up being lower than the height of your feet there. When you're relaxing during the day, you can kick up your feet in this part and kind of it's like a, more like a lounge chair. But then sleeping at night, you really want to kick your feet out and you'll find yourself sliding to the bottom of the hammock if you don't get your feet up higher. Um, but given that, I find the sleep being really comfortable. Uh, so several ways to stay warm in a hammock. Um, they make double layer hammocks. Some people will put a pad in the hammock. Some people will put a pad in that double layer. Helps keep it from slipping around. Uh, I have a setup like that and that's what I used to use. I'd blow up a pad specifically made for hammocks by Climate. Had little wings on it to kind of help envelope you a little bit. And I really enjoyed that though. The filling up and the taking down of the pad did take some, some time. Um, I will take that set up sometimes with me if I'm gonna be in an area where I don't know if I'm gonna have trees in order to set up my hammock. Um, with that pad, I can always throw a tarp on the ground with my pad on the ground and then set up my tarp as a little A-frame over that pad um, on the ground. So it, it's much more versatile in that sense, but nine out of ten times I find myself hunting in, in areas with trees and I can set up this tarp and uh, hammock literally anywhere. I can get into an area if I hear a bull bugling down in a canyon, I don't have to hike around searching for a flat spot to set up my tent. I just have to find two trees. Even if I'm on a, on a hillside or a bank going down, as long as you have two trees, you can set up your sleep system. Granted, you are gonna be on a hillside, so not the most comfortable in the morning, but even finding little areas with dips and rolls, you can set up your hammock have a great area to stay the night without stomping around looking for a, a spot for your for your tent. So getting back to what I was talking about, we've got a pad set up um, that can help keep this warm. I like to use what's called an under quilt. It's kind of like a sleeping bag underneath the hammock. So this keeps the bottom of the hammock warm by creating a pocket of air down below the hammock. It sets up and takes down very quickly and very easily. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and just peel that off so you can kind of see it and see what it looks like here. So it's just got a, a carabiner on one end and that's just gonna, gonna flop off the hammock. I've got a little extra knot here to hold that in place. And then it'll just flop off the head end. And this is what the bottom bottom quilt looks like looks like there. So we'll take this and just set this aside for now. And then we'll go around to the other side and I can show you a few things about setting up uh, this hammock on the on the other side and what to look for. So another great thing about hammocks uh, that I'll point out is these long long lines that you have out here. These are great, especially under the tarp and over the hammock. You can just throw a jacket, throw gear uh, to dry out and stuff like that. The bag that the, the hammock rolls up into, you can just leave on the end, uh, put any of your, your toothbrush and other, other toiletry type stuff, quick access stuff, you can just, uh, just have set up in there. All right, so now we're on that other side of the hammock where we have the zipper. The zipper here goes the, the whole length of, of the hammock, um, allows you to, to get in that way. Um, you've got a little fly net here that you can climb under. Uh, you can also uh, unbungee cord this, take the take it off the stake, um, and just uh, just flip it around the, the the other side of the the, the hammock. But you can climb in and out with this uh, ju just like it is. Um, so one of the things that I love about hammock, if you set it up right and test it out, is that uh, it's at uh, it's at sitting level. So you kind of have a nice chair in the morning uh, to, to put your boots on, lace, lace up your boots, makes that a, a lot slicker and a lot easier than doing that stuff, um, sitting sitting on the ground. 
Um, inside this hammock, we have the, the top part of our sleep system, uh, the top quilt. Uh, mine is a lot like a sleeping bag and you can, for all intents and purposes, use your sleeping bag if you don't want to invest in a top top quilt. All that a top quilt is, is you can think of it, uh, a lot of them have a foot box on them, like a, like a sleeping bag. But then at the, the top of it, it unfolds more like a blanket. Uh, I love this about hammocks because you've got that bottom quilt. You can just wrap this up and got your top quilt. And instead of a tight little mummy bag where you almost feel suffocated a little bit, you got a little bit of room to kind of stretch out, stretch your arms out. Um, very, very comfortable. This one made by z Packs actually does have a zipper on it. So it can be made into a, a mummy style bag uh, if, if need be. Um, but the idea being that when we lay on a, a sleeping bag, we squish down all that loft on the bottom side of a sleeping bag and it no longer insulates us. So a hammock setup has that bottom quilt which hangs from the hammock, doesn't get compressed. So that keeps us warm on bottom. This keeps us toast on toasty on top. And again, just has a little bit more room to, to kind of stre stretch out in it. Um, so we'll set this aside. Um, and the other side of this uh, on war bonnets has a pocket on it. Uh, it's a little flap that just hangs down, which is real nice because you can put uh, things like your your cell phone and uh, any night gear, your flashlight and stuff that you want. But also there's this top ridge line that's kind of hard to see. What I will do in the evening is I'll tuck my pants around that and I'll kick it all the way up in the top of the hammock. I'll put my jacket over that, tuck it all the way up in the top. So in the morning I have all my gear in here to, to get ready in the morning and I've gotten good enough that I can even get my pants onto this thing before I even climb out. Uh, from under under my sleeping bag uh, in the morning. I don't have to fish around and find stuff. I can take that stuff on cold mornings and I can tuck it under me about a half hour before I get up, warm everything up before I actually actually put it put it on. So anyways, let's go ahead and, and get in and I'll, I'll show you this thing. So we're gonna slide into the, the sleeping bag like this. So a, a normal bag, you kind of sleep like so. And that's with your, your feet kind of kind of kicked up and you can see how it creates kind of this banana you can't really can't really get on your side or anything like that but with this if you take your feet and you kick them out to the side and you rotate your upper body you're kind of becoming an x with that 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 main line there and you get a much flatter sleep out of it like this you can even curl up in this way on the side and have your feet kicked out and laying much more flat uh, i don't know if you can you can see that on there but but i'm i'm really hoping so because um, it just makes for a really nice and uh, and comfortable way to, to sleep. Uh, zip up the bug net, of course, and keep all, all the bugs out. But uh, a great way to, to hunt in the backwoods is in these hammocks. Uh, the last uh, and probably best feature when I'm hunting on my own, super lightweight setup, compact, fast to set up, fast to take down if I want to move camp. Very, very quick and efficient and lighter weight than any real tent setup that I've, I've got. Now, if you're hunting with uh, two hunters, I can get a hyper light uh, setup down below the weight of this setup split between the two hunters. Um, that's using like a, a pyramid type type tent, uh, minus from hyper light mountain gear. And this is uh, that hyper light mountain gear picture of that in one of my uh, later season muzzle loading hunts uh, out, out in the snow. So uh, this is uh, uh, one of my favorite setups. I typically use four setups, um, and this one just covers kind of the first and second one, which is are both for, for hammock hunting. One is the, the single layer hammock uh, that, I, that I illustrated in the, the beginning of this video. Uh, the, the last thing I'd like to leave you guys with is just a little bit of weight. So when weights are important to people, you know kind of what to look at. So that first setup with the single layer hammock, um, the bottom quilt and the tarp over the top weighs in at about 3.72 pounds. Um, that's kind of my, my sleep setup. That doesn't count the weight of a, of a mummy bag or the top quilt, um, because I don't want to factor that in, uh, with my other sleep setup. So the other one I'll use sometimes is the double layer quilt that has two layers on the bottom where you can slide a pad in between those two layers. 
Otherwise, it's it's kind of the same setup, but it, it is a little bit heavier and comes in at 5.17 pounds. The advantage to that one, if I'm in an area that I don't think I may be able to find trees all the time and I may have to go to the ground, that again allows me to set up that tarp with uh, my trekking poles. Uh, put the the pad still on the ground on a on a tar a small tarp or something like that, and then sleep in that way. The other setups involves that tent that you just saw, um, and I may do videos on on those in the future. But pretty standard pyramid tent setups. Uh, those are by Hyperlight Mountain Gear, and I have two inserts that I use in those. Some one I have by myself that allows me to have a huge vestibule especially if the weather's increment and then just have a back area with a bug net. And then uh, also if I'm hunting with two people, uh, has a full uh, insert with a bathtub floor on that. Uh, for my weight on that, uh, um, because I can split the tent and the bug net up a little bit, um, my weight on that comes out to 3.32 pounds. Um, that would count a, my Big Agnes uh, air pad that I use, um, which comes in at uh, 1.5 pounds. It's 25 inches wide by 76 inches long, um, maybe 78 inches long. Um, I really like to sleep comfortably and, and warm. I think that's an important part of hunting is just getting a really good night's sleep because we're pushing ourselves super hard. But you can see where if I split that tent up, I can get my weight down a little bit on backpacking hunts, um, but not by, not by much. Um, when that, that uh, single layer hammock comes in at 3.72 pounds and my part of the weight on the tent comes in at, at 3.32 pounds, I'm, I'm only saving a, about half a pound. Now the weight on the tent doesn't include the center pole because typically I will strap my trekking poles together to make that center pole. So with those tent weights, if you also want a center pole and then have your trekking poles on you, you're going to be adding some weight and that's going to probably push you up above what those hammock setups can do. So I hope this just helps open your eyes to the possibility of a, of a hammock setup for you. Uh, not that that's the answer for everybody. I really try to make my videos uh, open-ended because everyone's needs are so much different depending on their size, their weight, uh, their physical condition, their ailments, all those things can, can help us uh, uh, guide us into making what's the best decision for ourselves. So I hope you found this uh, helpful. Uh, happy hunting, everyone.